yeah, so we're watching this video. I, by the way, have like a fear of um, uh, deep seas and like, you know, big fish. <laughs> I guess they are highly specialized predators. So uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult to watch. Adaptations in order to survive Shark. the various habitats of the ocean. Yeah, it will be like Near an the hour. Surface, pelagic sharks like blue sharks, makos, and great whites exhibit fairly similar features. I mean, the sharks are still like you know they're quite scary, right? They are streamlined to allow. But I feel like the lower movement. you go, like bluish gray, so the depths of the seas, they're gonna get like really deformed or like have some weird uh, these pollution sharks thingies. Represent just the tip of the iceberg, for lurking in deeper waters is a world of elusive, mysterious, That's just scary, man. often gigantic shark species, from the bioluminescent lantern shark to the parasitic cookie-cutter shark that tears chunks from whales and dolphins. What? To understand why sharks of the depths are so different to those at the surface, we must find out what caused them to diversify in this way. The you have paralyzed faces or what? Possibly yeah. dates back to the late Ordovician period, 450 years That glowing ago. shark though, what in the hell? In the time that followed, these primitive sharks evolved in a number of ways with one group of cartilaginous fish having diverged 420 million years ago to become the alien Damn. chimera relatives of true sharks what but belonging now to a what is that that's not real right by the early jurassic period one there's no way that's real million years ago the oldest known order of modern sharks the there's no way that one was real six skill sharks had emerged it was now that they evolved that slender, scary. fast moving bodies and flexible protruding jaws, allowing them to eat prey larger than themselves. While many sharks we find Imagine you are diving and then you see that. Immensely I think I would just I don't know I don't know what I would do. Dude, <laughs> you can't even get away from them. In comparison. Most notably, they have you just six dead? or seven gill slits instead of the usual five found on most sharks. This also, gills are weird. In the frilled shark, with its slim, eel-like body. Yo, what is that? Head. Oh my god, that is not real. This Another looks like a fossil. This order, the blunt <laughs> that looks like a. a that looks like a fossil. Well down on its back, as well as an anal fin. Features that are remnants from their ancestors of the ancient seas. What Yo, some of these are actually like the fact that many of these more ancient sharks, what the hell? including both the hexanchiforms and the squaliforms, now seem to inhabit the deeper regions of our oceans. I mean, that one's quite cute, though. A feature that is best explained when we right. This one's quite cute. Adaptations, quite small the conditions of their world. In the depths. Never mind. These aren't these aren't cute anymore. In the water. This suggests that for six gill frilled and seven gill sharks, it is advantageous to have more gill slits so that they are more efficient at absorbing the oxygen they need. Interesting. So there is no more gills equals more oxygen to lose the extra slits. Contrasting, we're going to add sharks that move to the shallows have no need for the extra slits, so they lost them over time. The large eyes of six gills is also an advantage. Allowing them to take in as much light as possible. That is a monster, man. Other deep sea sharks reflect light in a process known. That one's kind of cool. Fluorescence. The cat shark is one of such. Just sharks, glowing. Possessing the ability to reflect blue light and re-emit it as green light in order to attract mates. I wonder if there's like actually like some weird ones. Another feature that we observe, addition to being larger. The Greenland shark has also evolved to live its life in slow motion. Yo, that is a big With shark. highly slowed metabolism, it can go for very long periods of time without eating. And is able to become the longest living vertebrate on the planet. What the hell? Growing up to 500 years old at depths of 7,000 I wonder how big it is compared to like 2, a... meters. To, to a human. The feeding habits of deep It must be at least like 10, 10 meters long, right? Species. Or at least 8. While makos and great whites rely on speed and agility to hunt down fast-moving prey, sharks here must be opportunistic. 
and depend largely on carrion. At sunken whale corpses, they use their serrated teeth as knives to Monka S. tear away at the flesh. Oh my god. Another species, the goblin shark, has the a goblin body shark and a large liver to allow Yo, it to be what? buoyant in very deep water. It is an elusive species, as are many of the creatures. Interesting. It doesn't look as dangerous, but it just looks weird. You know? It looks a little bit for bigger. One of the largest shark species on the planet, the megamouth shark was discovered for the first time as recently as 1976. There's probably like lots of sharks or like just fish that we haven't discovered yet. During the night, I think there was like a statistic, right? That like only we uncovered like 10% or like 1% during the day of the seas. It's actually crazy. This behavior is known as diel vertical migration. The synchronized movement of zooplankton and fish up and down the what water is that? column over a daily cycle. So it's plankton. Overall, deep sea sharks are understandably unique in the light. Well, that's interesting. And nutrient -poor depth. Yeah, there's definitely some weird stuff going on Adopting there. Anyways, I'm not going to drag it out.